Thanks for joining us today on this edition of Business Daily. I'm Lee Ji-yoon in Seoul. Before we get started, let's first take a look at today's highlights. The country's once formidable manufacturing sector is now struggling to get back on its feet amid slowing global demand and growing competition from China. We sit down with an expert to talk about this. It's tough for a lot of women here in Korea to keep on working after they get married and have children. So a growing number of them are turning to another option, starting their own businesses. These stories are more coming right up. But first, an international journalist group has released a searchable database of offshore entities that are part of the Panama Papers investigation. Our Oh Soo Young starts us off. More than 200,000 offshore entities included in the Panama Papers have been made public. The International Consortium of Investigative Journalists released the database on Tuesday at 2 a.m. Korea time. Visitors can go to the website to see who is behind the different accounts tucked away in 21 offshore havens around the world. Among the tens of thousand entities listed, only eight were found to be held by South Korean nationals. North Korea doesn't appear on the list of countries on the website. The online database does not include records of bank accounts and financial transactions, emails, passports, other correspondence or phone numbers. The ICIJ said it was releasing the information in order to serve public interest. The data, however, is a tiny fraction of the roughly 11.5 million documents leaked to a German newspaper last year. The papers belong to a Panama-based law firm, Mossack Fonseca, one of the world's biggest players in the grey zone of shell companies, trusts and other kinds of offshore financing. Some of the Panama Papers scandal's most shocking revelations include the involvement of high-profile figures around the world and a number of companies linked to suspected money laundering, arms and drug deals and tax evasion. Also Young, Business Daily. Disappointing jobs figures from the U.S. have amped up speculation that the Federal Reserve will sit on its next rate hike a little longer. The expected time frame has now been pushed back to September. Our Kim jong su has more. Financial experts and investors on Wall Street are anticipating the U.S. Federal Reserve will postpone hiking its interest rates to September. According to a Reuters survey of 18 major banks, 70 percent said the hikes will occur in that month. 80 percent speculated that rates will stay the same at the Fed's next meeting in June. Their reasoning is that the U.S. job market is performing worse than expected. In the latest U.S. Labor Department report, Payrolls for non-agricultural industries increased by less than what economists expected, as April's job gains were the smallest since September. The expected number of new jobs for April was 200,000, but the actual increase amounted to only 160,000. The numbers are in stark contrast to May of 2015, when the U.S. welcomed a boost of over 280,000 jobs. But there are some experts who interpret the Labor Department report in a more positive light. When you put this report together with the trend we've been watching in jobless claims, which is a much more comprehensive and more timely information, it's telling you that the job market is doing pretty well, even if this month's report itself is a little disappointing. The report also said both average hourly earnings and average work weeks are rising. With the data sending mixed signals and global growth slowing, world economies are monitoring how and when the Fed will finalize its interest hike decision. Kim jong Su, Business Daily. The word restructuring has been at the center of the attention in the world of business here in Korea after the government announced plans to overhaul the country's struggling industries. And hit hardest by slower growth in China and problems of oversupply are Korean manufacturers. Take a look. Things are looking not so bright for Korea's manufacturers, who once spearheaded the country's rapid economic growth. A prolonged slump in exports, falling global oil prices and weakening domestic demand have all taken a toll on Asia's fourth largest economy, all while the global economy remains stuck in a slumbering growth trend. So with hopes of breathing life back into the country's struggling manufacturing sector, the government has laid out plans to tackle overcapacity, tepid demand and increased competition from Chinese rivals. 
Under the plan, shipping and shipbuilding companies will first go under rigorous restructuring, but experts say builders, steel, petrochemicals and semiconductor producers are also in need of a shake-up. The road to recovery looks tough as Korean manufacturers are directly affected by China's slowdown and the country remains largely dependent on overseas trade. So how will the government effectively restructure and transform manufacturers that are weighing down growth? And to tell us more about this, Professor Yang Jun Suk from the Catholic University of Korea joins us in the studio today. So good to see you, Professor. Happy to be here. All right, so Korea's manufacturing industry has been hard hit by China's slowing economy as well as falling demand and oversupply. Can you tell us more about what happened here exactly? Okay, well, the problem is uh, ag reduced aggregate demand. Ever since the uh, 2008 financial crisis, uh, people, have, uh, people around the world have been hit with a uh, very big financial crisis. Uh, the uh, cause for a lot of these problems were debt. Mm -hmm. And whenever you have a debt-induced financial crisis, the recovery seems to be very slow. Uh, since the uh, people were hit by debt crisis, they have not only they have a recession to deal with, with reduced incomes, more insecurity about their jobs in the future, they also have to either pay back the debt or they have to sort of uh, give up the debt, mm -hmm. give up paying, and they give up a lot of collateral. They also lo uh, lost a lot of uh, their value of their savings because the uh, value of the subprime mortgages fell or value of the uh, Greek bonds fell. Mm -hmm. So they have to work to save more to try to regain the level of savings they want for retirement or their family or whatever. So all these factors make uh, recovery very slow. And so we've been suffering from a slow aggregate, slow and low aggregate demand mm -hmm. uh, since 2008. So advanced economies have been trying to expand quantitative easing measures to tackle problems stemming from oversupply and falling demand. Are those measures working? Well, uh, if you look at the econometric studies, then it has been working, but it hasn't been enough to uh, make the uh, global economy recover. Okay. Uh, now, the uh, quantitative easing works by the uh, central bank buying uh, non traditional uh, bonds, uh, long-term bonds or private bonds, and trying to give banks more liquidity, more reserves. Now, th uh, just because the central bank has given more reserves to the bank does not necessarily mean that the banks lend it out. Mm -hmm. And even if they lend it out, it doesn't necessarily mean that people who borrowed the money spend it. So all these factors are making the quantitative easing less powerful than people originally thought. Mm -hmm. So it is working. Uh, when we see the measure of M1, which is the tightest uh, definition of money supply, it has been rising with the uh, quantitative easing. But when we look at the wider definitions of money, which includes things like loans, it hasn't been rising as much. So we know that QE works. We know that countries which did QE tend to have uh, lower uh, bad effects mm -hmm. than countries which uh, do not do QE. But it hasn't been enough to really make the uh, global economy recover. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been saying that the hardest hit sector is Korea's manufacturing industries. Why? Okay, well, it's basically China. Uh, Korea has been exporting nearly 50% of its exports to China. And uh, when the Chinese economy started slowing down, all that uh, exports were hit very hard. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in addition, the problem comes because, well, Korean exports tend to have a lot of competitors. Uh, and the competitive competition to uh, sell their products has been fierce in the last few years. Also, the type of goods that Koreans make. Well, if the global income goes up, the sales go up even higher. But the opposite picture of that is when the global income goes down or the uh, growth in income slows down, then the Korean uh, exports are hit harder. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, whenever Whenever we see global incomes going up, we see Korean exports doing well. This is the flip side of that. All right. And amid all this, the Korean government recently announced its plan to restructure and reshuffle the shipbuilding and shipping industries. But how are the steel and petrochemical sectors doing amid all this? Okay. Well, petrochemical industries had a lot of problems last year because the price of oil fell. But the, stock, the price that they have paid for their stocks already were fairly expensive. So they were caught in that middle there, but now uh, they've adjusted to the lower prices, so they're doing fairly well, at least compared to last year. Mm -hmm. Steel 
uh, risk uh, having a lot of excess supply in the global market right now because China had built up a lot of capacity. Uh, they had a uh, construction boom and they followed the uh, Korean and uh, Japanese uh, strategy of uh, getting a lot of steel mills in place before they uh, start other mm -hmm. phases of industrialization. And because their construction uh, industry is in such a problem right now, uh, the, they have excess supply of steel, which they're getting rid of in the global market. Mm -hmm. Now, what about uh, Korea's auto industry? Okay, well, auto industry, their exports have been falling in the last couple of years. Uh, they had a fairly high uh, decrease in exports uh, so far this year. Uh, but uh, uh, so their industry is in not a not terribly good shape, but uh, some of that have been mitigated because Korea has temporarily reduced individual consumption tax, mm -hmm. so domestic consumption has been rising. It hasn't been enough to completely offset the uh, fallen exports, so their production volume is down. Mm -hmm. But still, uh, I think this is a case where uh, the government successfully tried uh, mitigated some of the effects uh, by replacing uh, fallen export demand mm -hmm. with domestic demand. Now, now, I know the country's uh, industries like in semiconductors and displays have also been struggling with oversupply. Can you tell us more about that? Well, displays, uh, the exports of those have been going down for a couple of years now. Uh, semiconductors uh, is, I think, an uh, interesting case because, well, until last year, it hasn't fallen all that much, mm. at least in terms of uh, memory uh, semiconductors that Korea okay. exports. Mm. Uh, but last year, the growth in exports were almost zero. Oh. And then this year, at least for the uh, first quarter, uh, it seems to have fallen down a lot. Now, w the reason that that is disturbing is because that may signal that the global recovery isn't really taking place and it's still being uh, far off in the future because semiconductor is one of those commodities which tend to uh, increase uh, consumption when, hmm. whenever you see a recovery. All right, then all in all, what kind of measures are needed in order to, I guess, help the country's manufacturing sector stand back on its feet? And as well as how should the government carry out its restructuring efforts from here and out? Okay, well, for some industries, as we mentioned earlier, steel, automobile, they're probably having temporary problems. But even there, they do uh, need to restructure a little bit to uh, bring their cost structure down. Mm -hmm. Now, for industries which are having really serious problems, marine transport, uh, shipbuilding, uh, they do need to restructure right away because even if there's a global recovery, it's not likely that these companies will recover. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the problem is that the, uh, uh, because uh, there's so much uh, public attention on the uh, restructuring for these companies, uh, and especially since uh, it's being led by state-owned banks, there's real danger that these firms may become zombies. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, because of the political problems, because it is too big to fail, the banks and the government will just continue to give money to these firms without really making a lot of restructuring mm -hmm. effort. So that's a danger that we have to watch out for. All right. Thank you so much for coming in today, Professor. Thank you. common to see women here in Korea give up their careers midway to get married and have children. But as living on a single paycheck becomes more difficult, more women are venturing out to start their own businesses to keep afloat. Our Eunice Kim has the story. Lee Soon-nam has two children at home. After mulling over what kind of work would allow her to keep an eye on the kids, she opened a study room a year ago and now turns a monthly profit of more than 1700 U.S. dollars. She says it was a challenging process. I'd been a stay-at-home mom for 15 years, so I was scared about entering the business world. Lee Joo-hee was a graphic designer before marriage. She opened a lunchbox delivery service two years ago and has nearly doubled her monthly sales, thanks to regular customers who appreciate her attention to detail. I was looking for something where I could use the skills from work I'd done before and something I'd be good at as a woman. In fact, by ratio, more women jumped into starting their own businesses than men did last year ticking up by 12.7% on-year. 
This as full-time homemakers are on the decline. Data shows their number consistently grew through 2013, then dropped two years in a row, coming in at less than 7.1 million last year. While the trend of younger women postponing marriage and starting a family is known, analysts say there is a growing pool of married women in their 50s and 60s who are stepping out to pursue outside work. Husbands don't have as much security with their jobs, and there is also retirement to think about. As having two incomes becomes more necessary for Korean families across all demographics, but as the job market leaves much to be desired, more people are opting to start their own business. As such, there is a need to properly prepare these new entrepreneurs before they face the strong currents of competition to minimize their risk of failure. Eunice Kim, Business Daily. And that wraps it up for today. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll be back tomorrow with more business news that matters to you. Until then, goodbye.